Guest lectures, integrated teaching with organ on, small groups, teacher, their lecture demonstrations. Then viva, you can again have tutorials, assignments, MCQs, SQs, LAQs, two marks, questions, structured oral. And then summative examination, you have theory as well as viva hosts to for the cognitive domain. So in the theory, you can have MCQs, LAQs, and SQs, and viva hosts as per the uh, questions you can ask the questions to the uh, students. This again goes the SLOs to select the select an ideal thrower for drug proving. So you uh, must know how to select. Then comes prepare the test substance, formulate the team. It is nice to know. So if he knows what is the team to be formulated, what is required to form a team for drug proving. Interpret the prover symptoms. Again nice to know. So if you uh, have a student as a part of your research project and uh, you hear tell him to interpret, if he has the knowledge of interpreting, he wants to interpret, nice to know. And then lastly, to translate the prover symptoms to Materia Medica, again, nice to know. So these are the different SLOs, how they can be formulated to different levels, whether they are coming under must know, desirable to know and nice to know. SLOs need at least some of desirable to know also and nice to know as well. Not all SLOs should be must know. You cannot say that everything must be known. There should be some that are desirable to know or nice to know. This again continues. Here the affective domain comes, shows professionalism and care. During proving, values the privacy and integrity of the prover, values the consent of the prover and values the ethical considerations during proving. He now know, he should know that ethics are required, consent is required, privacy must be respected. If he has the law again, uh, it comes under effective domain, internalizing and nice to know. So if he has the knowledge, it is nice that he has the knowledge, but we are not expecting that all students must have this. And then uh, lectures, role plays for uh, drug proving, team based learning, simulation assessment, you can give simulations to the students and assessment. And lastly, theory and viva post. There is no practical of drug proving, so there is no involvement of any practical examination for drug proving. Lesson plan, I need not go into the details. If you are teaching today that I want to teach the proving protocol, day book and symptom elaboration pro forma, my SLOs will be defined accordingly. So uh, uh, explain what uh, explain the proving protocol, explain the layout of the day book, explain the uh, importance of symptom elaboration pro forma and then respective timings, respective assessment methods and respective teaching learning methods. This is second lesson plan. So everybody is on the same page as of drug proving and potentization. Pathology. At the end of the topic of, uh, the, sorry, pathology, pathology, so at the end of the topic of pathology, you must be able to, one, select a particular potency for a particular case, select a particular dose for a particular case, repeat the dose as per the criteria, uh, criteria for repetition of doses. So that is what we expect the students of. Here we are not expecting the first BHM student to go to the IPD, take the case and give the medicine and give the potency. He has to observe or give a simulated case, give a case formulated. He has to just read the case and select the potency based upon the case which has been given. So we are not expecting that the student at the first page of itself, itself will be sitting in the OPD taking the case and coming up to the selection of potency. But you can form a case, you can have a case simulation role play and the students listening the case or reading the case must come to which potency needs to be given what will be the dosage and what should be the repetition based upon the criteria because we are going to teach them first then only we are going to apply. So that they will be having the basic understanding of the criteria of selection of potency whether they are able to apply those criteria after they have learned the knowledge. Generic competencies, again problem solution, integration of knowledge, OPD, IPD transfer because they are going to be standing in the OPD, so OPD, IPD transfer will be their synthesis and application of knowledge. So you see general competence are totally general. Whether he is able to apply the knowledge, integrate the knowledge, problem solving, uh, classroom to OPD, IPD transfer, wherever practicals are will be there, it will be classroom to lab transfer. 
subject area will be pathology, specific competencies as we have spoken, selecting a particular potency, particular dose and repeating, and then horizontal integration with organon, susceptibility can be taught by organon and selection of potency can be taught by pharmacy. So this is just an example, again it's not that uh, uh, organon has to talk only about susceptibility, but how organon and pharmacy can be integrated while teaching pathology. SLOs, so define pathology, explain the criteria for selection of potency. So these two are purely cognitive, coming under nose. Level 1 is process he has to just define. Second, he has to explain. If you have not understood, how he is going to explain. So this is very simple. So it comes under cognitive domain. First, SLO comes under level 1 of Gilbert, that is recall. Second, comes under level 2, that is understand, must know, must know. Next, he must be apply the criteria in a particular case that is desirable to know. He may be wrong, he, uh, he can go wrong. So, it does must know that it must be correct, but he should be able to apply the uh, knowledge in a particular case. So, cognitive again, he is applying the knowledge, so it goes to level 3 of Gilbert's that is problem solving. And then the different types of doses, of course, uh, of course, he must know what are the different types of doses. It comes with a cognitive, knows level 1, he is just going to enlist it and it is must know. Explain the criteria for repetition of doses, understanding level 2 and must know. Again, these are the different teaching learning methods. More or less, they remain the same. Student seminars, integrated lectures, group discussions, problem solving, case-based learning, case simulation. So they will be standing in the OPD, IPD, they can just see the case and come to the conclusion or you can give them a case or you can enact the case, that is what is known as case based learning or case simulation. Formative assessment, LAQs, SAQs, assignments, tutorials, if you are giving a case based learning, assess that case, how they have solved the particular case. So case based assessment and simulation assessment. And lastly the cognitive aspect, it comes under theory as well as of viva. So you can have MCQs, LAQs and SEQs plus in the YY you can have questions on the topic of pathology. It goes on, apply the criteria for repetition of doses, cognitive level 3, it becomes under problem solving because he is going to apply, it comes under desirable to know. Choose the correct potency for a particular case, he may or may be wrong, he may not be wrong, it is desirable to know but it is level 3 of Gilbert's that is problem solving. He, whether he is able to choose the proper dosage, again desirable to know, level 3 and design the dosage and repetition for a particular case, level 3, nice to If you give a case and uh, if you give a case and say that select the potency and the criteria for repetition, if he designs it, good. He has the uh, complete knowledge. If he does not, is not able to uh, design, still it is just nice to know. Here are the teaching learning methods, case based assessment, OSPs and case simulation and uh, then lastly you have theory examination. You can have a checklist under practical examination under objective structure practical examination. Lesson plan, if I am going to uh, teach criteria for selection of potency, explain the different criteria according to one, nature and depth acute diseases with structural changes, acute diseases without, uh, with lowered vitality and so on. Each of these SLOs, teaching learning methods, assessment methods, sources, resources. So this is how you can now, the SLOs which are there in the CBDC template, they can be converted into a lesson plan. So entire topic, if it is going to be taught in six lectures, you will have six lesson plans for that particular topic. So potentization, if uh, 6 hours are allotted, 6 lesson plans will can be formed for each and every particular lecture. It's just an activity, I think we don't have time. So if I say, you can give such an activity to the student. That XYZ male patient, 38 years, diagnosed with gallbladder calculi, patient has no symptoms, the condition was diagnosed on routine USG. Patient wants homeopathic medicine, select the appropriate potency and dosage. So this is after we have taught pathology. So we have taught each and every criteria. We have also taught the dosage, we have also taught the repetition. Now I want to see whether the student will be able to apply it. 
give up a case. He is not taking the case of a patient. We are giving him a formed case. He has to just in the classroom sit and come to a conclusion what potency, what dosage. If he has then assess it, whether he is right, whether he is wrong. Give the feedback to the student. Student will know where he is wrong, whether he is right. He can apply it while writing a 10 marks long question of criteria for selection of <coughs> So this is how you can go for activities at the end of the lectures, assessment at the end of the lectures. It was expected that these activities will be taken, but I have to complete the entire uh, presentation still a lot of things. Old methods. This is the last example, then we go on. So we have seen about pathology, potentization, drug proving, then coming to the old methods of preparation of homeopathic drugs. Learning outcomes, you must be able to prepare the homeopathic medicine as per old methods. Again, it is the 25th topic, it is first 25, 1, 2, 3, whatever it is. Classroom to lab transfer, practice based learning, improvement, integration of knowledge, synthesis of knowledge. So, you are teaching the knowledge in the class. He has to uh, grasp the knowledge, apply the knowledge in the laboratory, and prepare. Uh, the medicine. If you say that prepare natramur, so 3x, you must know natramur belongs to which class, then in which vehicle to be used, how it is to be done, and uh, which potency. So 3x means you must know that it is decimal scale, and accordingly you must be able to prepare. So this is where the generic competencies come, classroom to lab transfer. Subject area becomes old methods, specific competencies to be achieved, that is, he must be able to prepare homeopathic medicines as per the old methods. So, if you uh, see the SLOs which have been defined, classify old methods, again he has to classify, it is level 2, if it does not have understanding, how is he going to classify? So, level 2 understanding, it is purely cognitive, he knows and it comes under must know. Enlist the fundamental rule, drug strength, drug to vehicle ratio, nature of drug substances and five examples of any class. So it comes under level one because you have to just enlist. You have to just recall what is the drug strength, drug to vehicle ratio. It comes under must know because he must know and cognitive domain, he knows it. Explain the preparation and potentization of mother tincture of class one to four according to the scale. Level 2 understanding, he has the knowledge, uh, he has understood how to prepare and potentize, therefore uh, understanding. He has to explain it, he has not do it, so it is coming under cognitive and it is must know, class 1 to 4. Explains the preparation of mother solutions, class 5 a 5b and the class 5 and 6, again same, level 2 understanding, must know cognitive. Explain potentization, class 7, 8 and 9. Again it is level 2 understanding, cognitive. Since it is explained, it is coming under cognitive domain. You can have the different teaching learning methods. You can have MCQs, LAQs, SAQs, projects, tutorials for assessing the cognitive, that is the knowledge. And theory and VIOs becomes the method in which you can assess the knowledge of the student regarding to the topic. Next, coming to the practical part of old methods. So now he is going to demonstrate preparation of mother tincture. He is going to demonstrate potentization of mother tincture. He is going to demonstrate preparation of mother solution. He is going to demonstrate potentization of mother solution. And he is going to demonstrate the trituration of class 7, 8 and 9. So he is going to use the hand, the skills, it becomes psychomotor. We are expecting him that at the exam he is going to stand alone to it. That's why it becomes level 3, that is automatism. He must know, it is must know. Mother teachers are must know, mother solutions are must know, class 7, 8, 9 is must know, and he does it. He has to do it. Here comes practical demonstrations, practical procedures, skills. Docs and OSPI become the assessment method because you can see whether he is triturating it properly, whether it is giving the succussions properly, you can have the checklist accordingly, and the summative examination becomes the practical examination. So, for assessing the practical skills, uh, practical examination is there. The practicals, uh, experiments can be given to the students. Your uh, examiner is standing and the student is doing the experiment. You are seeing whether the uh, student is doing it properly or not. Last, 
He must show care and commitment by dispensing and preparing according to the whole model. Here it is care, commitment, that is why it comes under the affective domain. Nice to know, he must know that he has to prepare it properly, correctly. He must be very clean while preparing. He must be very thorough with the measurements and so on. It comes under practical demonstration and practical examination. So this is how the SLOs of old methods can be divided over cognitive, psychomotor as well as affective domain. You have theory, you have practical skills, practical skills assessed by practical examination, talks and ospi, theory by your MCQs, LAQs and SQs. Lesson plan, I will not go into the details now. If you are teaching 5A, 5B, this will be your SLOs. So this is for theory, the teaching learning method, the assessment methods, the resources which you are going to use. See, now old methods come under practical as well. So practical lesson plan, he has to, uh, class 1 potentization for example. Now, everybody is clear, as of now any difficulties, any questions as of now. We have seen four examples with the CVDC template. So, any difficulties regarding the uh, yes? Competence level exam of the students, what you said, has to be taken at the end of each topic. Now, what is the classroom of 60 students or 100 students? Yes. How many are going to conduct that examination? Uh, so, you can give assignments, you can give tutorials. Admitting in the North, uh, lay the hours. At the end of the year, you can, uh, at the end, if you are teaching, you can give tutorials, they can submit it to the next day. Because they are going to be adding the internal assessment exams. Yes. Right. You come to their internal assessment exam. So, uh, after each and every topic, see, it's not compulsory to assess at, at the end of each and every topic as per the syllabus. But it is better to assess the each and every topic. You can give them MCQs, you can give them LAQs, you can give them SQs. They can go home and write, they, can, they will open the book and write, but at least they will study, at least they will write. So that is, uh, what is the main aspect to make the student study, so assessment at the, at the end of each and every topic. NCH is not said that at the each and every topic you have to assess. Yeah, NCH is given a different format of periodic assessment as well as terminals. Now these TL methods have been uh, they are defined by NCH. So it will be there. You have classroom lectures, so oral presentations, board work, PowerPoint presentations, tutorials, special classes. You know, somebody, uh, Dr. Pipin Jain, uh, somebody asked Dr. Pipin Jain, there are different levels of the students, if certain students are not able to grasp. They have clearly stated special classes for slow learners, involving students of small groups of 5 to 10. So not all learners will be slow learners. You have to identify whether some students will require help, some push. Those become your slow learners. Those who are very much ahead, those become your advanced learners. So advanced learners can be, uh, you know, given projects. They must be, yes, seminars, projects, STSH program, they must be able to uh, participate. And then slow learners, additional tutorials, additional classes, examples are there. Then practical class, demonstration, explanation of experiments. Clinical classes, visit to the OPD and IPD, administration of homeopathic medicine and dispensary, field visits. Here it is one GMP compliant manufacturing unit and one medicinal plant garden. And then student activities, working out the assignments, projects, PowerPoint presentations, student seminars. So these are the broad teaching learning methods which NCH has defined. You can use any of the teaching learning methods as per your feasibility, as per your timetable, as per your time. So this is not that whatever is given has to be documented. You do it, document it, you are doing it. This is just an example of how a timetable will be there, 100 hours. What we have calculated is 2 hours per week is sufficient for 100 hours. 2 hours per week of pharmacy lectures. This, this is just a sample template. It is up to the college to design according to your load and other subjects. Now what we have done is 2 hours per week is sufficient to have 100 hours over 18 months. So 18 months 
how many months, how many weeks, how many days, how many hours, that's how we calculated and we came to a conclusion that two hours are sufficient per week. If you have two lectures of pharmacy in a week, it will be sufficient over 18 months. Third lecture, we have kept it as buffer because sometimes the examination, the field visits, the holidays come, the annual social gatherings come and then days go in between the internal assessment terminals and so on. So in those days if it is compromised then the third lecture will help us attain and you can have a separate lecture for example what we have kept is on Saturday we have kept integrated teaching. So first lecture it will be first Saturday of the month it will be anatomy physiology, second Saturday it will be physiology and pharmacy, third will be again anatomy and physiology and so on. So in a month you get only one integrated lecture but then that integrated lecture you can club up with whatever topics you have for integration. You can call anatomy teachers, you can call organon teachers and have it as an integrated lecture. And third buffer lecture what we have kept is, we have kept it for all the different teaching learning methods which is given. So student seminars is there, PhD learning is there. So as per the topic, when pathology will be there or how the learning comes, you can take it in that particular lecture. Next, we have divided batches for uh, practicals and then you have the OPD, IPD postings. Accordingly, you can have the batches for the OPD, IPD postings uh, from second semester and till then it will be for the practicals. So this is just a brief template how a timetable can be formed. Again, it is up to the college how to design it as per the need of different subjects, as per your uh, lecture requirement and as per your feasibility you can uh, have the timetable. Timetable template will not be provided by the institute, it is not there in the syllabus document. It is to be uh, uh, found by the respective colleges. <coughs> Next, advanced teaching plan. Again it is as per convenience, it is not included in the syllabus template. It is of how it is for the compliance for you yourself, your department, whether you are compl uh, complying with the necessary lectures and whatever is been given. So you have the topic name, you have the date, you have the name of the teacher and compliance. So what we do is at the initial stage, starting of the year only, we plan it for the entire year. So day one, date, which topic, which teacher, teacher and compliance, whether he has taken or not. That then at the end when any inspection comes at any point of time, you are not in a hurry to make any documents. You have the advanced teaching plan ready, you have the timetable ready, you now will be having the lesson plans. So any uh, inspection at any point of time you are ready for the, your department. So it is not added work, it is already done, it is prior, you have already done that lesson plan, uh, advanced teaching plan. So accordingly just compliance is required. Because sometimes some inspectors check for compliance, whether that advanced teaching plan which we have found is followed as per the topic which is given, as per the date which is given. I remember in one of the inspections, they actually in one of the departments, they actually cross-check their advanced teaching plan and the register. So whether, for example, on this day, this uh, teacher was going to this, then in that register, whether on dot date, that teacher has taken that particular topic. That, that is why the last column we have added in our college complex. So it helps us keep a check on our uh, teaching also whether we are going in the uh, right direction or whether any improvement is required and a deletion. We are overgoing and we are doing much more than what is required and deletion of something what has been done. Again, it is not compulsory, it is not there in the syllabus template. It is just a model template as to how this curriculum can be implemented in a better way. Assessment, this is there in the syllabus. Course code is uh, home UGHP. You will have, uh, we'll have one papers, theory 100 marks, practical 50, viva 40, internal assessment 10. So total theory will be 100. Viva and practical 100, but in that 190 marks and 10 marks. 10 marks for the internal assessment. In the rough document, it has been given 20, but now it is 10. So it is 10 marks for internal assessment and uh, practical viva was 90 marks. So 90 plus 10 becomes 100 for your practicals. You will be having in the first term, 
one period we will be having in the first term one periodical assessment and one terminal examination in the second term we will be having second periodical assessment and second terminal examination in the third term we will be having third periodic assessment prelim examination and this is the final university examination this is the internal assessment which has been defined in the syllabus so you have three periodical assessments you have two terminals prelim examination and the final university examination so this is again calculated now for the, this internal assessment whatever the periodic assessment we have shown tops ospi other uh, assessment criteria you can have any of the assessment methods for the internal assessment it is up to us up to our purview which method we want to utilize for the internal assessment so periodic assessment semester wise topic wise this has been defined again this is there in the copy you have practical clinical performance you can have mcqs viva os modified essay questions structured questions open book test summary writing class press you know see see research papers and synopsis <coughs> so if you are teaching drug proving you want certain students who are uh, bright enough you can have class presentations book uh, workbook then uh, problem based assignments ospi docs case based learning extracurricular activities if uh, you want to and then small projects you can give so this is for the periodical assessment of the students you can include these assessment methods paper layout mcqs 10 marks mcqs 50 marks laqs 40 marks all are compulsory questions there will be no optional questions there will be no options or a compulsory this is there in the document it is there in the syllabus no options will be given or all compulsory questions 10 marks mcqs 50 marks saqs and laqs will be of 40 marks there will be 10 SQs of 5 marks each, there will be 4 LAQs of 10 marks each and there will be 10 MCQs of 1 mark each. So 10 MCQs, 10 LAQs and 4 LAQs, no option to be given. So this is there in the... Next. Topic wise has also been this. Sections. 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 No. Sections. No classification. No classification. Of no classification. 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 It was up to the purview of the university, two sections were there earlier. Because there will be just a final checking. Yes. So I am checking one section, I will be checking all 100 students, one section of all the similar answers. Suppose I have to check for both the sections, then how can I do justice? No, now in, in the, earlier there will be no section, earlier it was different from university to university. Like you are saying that you have two sections, one section, one examiner was checking, second section, second examiner was checking. In our university, both the sections, both the uh, examiners are checking. So that was uh, there. So your entire paper, entire paper will be checked by two examiners. Entire paper. Yeah, entire paper of 100 marks, one examiner will check all 100 papers, second examiner will also check all 100 papers and then the aggregate will be taken out and that will be how the assessment will be. So it will be 100 marks, 100 marks paper A, same, if I am writing the paper, you two are examiners, my paper you will check, uh, examiner 1 will check, then it will go to the examiner 2, and those marks the aggregate is uh, will take. So two, two examiners will check the same. 
Mark list. Yeah. And, uh, that you so again, that purview will be given to the university. Uh -huh. right. So your university will have that purview regarding whether how the answer the, the, the uh, assessment. Yes, sir, it is decided by university how it will be conducted. Yes, university will have the purview. It is not by NCA. No, no. University will have the purview. University will have the purview. University will have the purview. The title will be similar. Sorry, a teacher named the university is an upside of the university. Left up to the university. Next, can you go ahead? 